Hi, it's Alexander from Galileo Sky. In the last video, we talked about ways to configure the device for working with CANBUS. In this video, I'll tell of standard FMS and G1939 protocols. You'll find out what is the difference between these two protocols, what parameters can you get and where the received data will be displayed, and how to configure the device to work with standard protocols. To start with, remember that identifier structure and data transmission principles in these protocols are identical. At the same time, J1939 allows to parse more parameters than FMS. Both protocols don't send requests to the CAN bus, so you can use contactless readers to work with data. Let's take a 29-bit identifier to understand how FMS and J1939 protocols work for data transmission. Let me remind you that identifiers can contain 11 or 29 bits. Their size depends on the CAN bus standards. You can figure it out in the vehicle owner's manual. So, the 29-bit identifier on the screen contains 4 bytes of information – 18, FE, FC, 20. But we won't use the first and the last bytes – numbers 18 and 20 in the analysis. The two middle bytes – FE, FC – are what we need. To understand what information is in these symbols, let's open the FMS protocol description. Two bytes in the middle of the identifier, FE and FC, is PGN. Now look at SPN value in this PGN. SPN is the parameter number. It identifies usually fuel level, engine speed or other quantitative indicators. In our case, SPN 96 is the fuel level. Now have a look at the seventh byte. It contains information if the vehicle has a second fuel tank but not in our case. You have to know the protocol's description and check it every time when you have doubts. It declares how data is transferred and determines ID, byte or bit where to look for the needed. It makes CAN decoding much easier. It's high time to figure out what data you can get and how to configure the unit to work with FMS protocol. FMS has such parameters as total fuel consumption and also the amount of fuel spent since car's production, fuel level in the tank, measured as a percentage, coolant temperature, engine speed, total mileage, machine hours, axle load and others. Let's see how to find them. Open the configurator program and select the FMS filter type on the CAN scanner tab. Set the bus speed or use automatic CAN speed detection. Start bus scanning. Now check if data is being processed properly. To do this, go to the device in the CAN tab. Make sure that everything is OK. To send the needed data to the monitoring software, mark the required parameters and place them into tags. That's it! If you need more parameters than FMS protocol can provide, then Galileo Sky specialists prepared a more deep data parsing with J1939 protocol using EasyLogic technology. Let's move on! How to find data with J1939 standard protocol? Open Configurator, then go to Commands tab and send the command to load the algorithm for data parsing. Here's the name of the algorithm. Press the Run Signal command button. Now go to Settings of the ConScanner tab and select Easy Logic as filter type. Apply settings. Now wait until the algorithm is uploaded to the tracker. Depending on the GSM signal strength, the download time may vary. As soon as the download is completed, algorithm name will be displayed on the device tab in the Easy Logic line. To check the received data, you go to Troubleshooting tab and select Algorithms and Scripts diagnostic option. Next, mark the tags on the protocol tab and send parameters to the monitoring software. That's it. This is how to receive CANBUS data with FMS and J1939 protocols. In the next video, I'll show how to get CAN data with J1979 protocol. You'll understand how it differs from the previous ones and master principles of its work. That's all for now. See you soon. Goodbye.